Welcome, mortals. Welcome to my 100% playthrough of Dusk HD on Cerro Miedo difficulty with intruder mode enabled. This is episode 3, The Nameless City, and this is map 9, The Dweller in Darkness. Oh man. I have been dreading this map since the start of this whole playthrough. The Dweller in Darkness. Question marks for kills and only one secret. Well, that's because this is a slaughter map, an arena horde mode slaughter map. And the one secret is actually just behind your starting point. Fall straight back and run straight to that teleporter. Do not fall off here or you are dead. The secret actually leads you to two things of note. Focus on getting there real quick. There we go. You both get a crystal of madness and a teleporter that takes you back to the start. Or you can hop down to that jump pad down there and get bounced all the way up to an exit and skip the whole level. But <laughs> of course we're not going to be doing that. So what we're going to do is place the crystal of madness. And do not step on it when you teleport because that can happen and you will break it. Show us that you this is the map I was referencing when I said, oh, by the way, we're going to be using the Crystal of Madness in a particular map in this episode. This is that map. So throw it through that teleporter. It will break, but that's okay. And get the bar of soap for the love of God. We're going to leave it right here at the start. Grab whatever you can and get ready. Because this map... Oh, yeah. So, here's how this map works. It is multiple waves of enemies. Every single enemy you have encountered in this game, you will be seeing in this map. So the first wave is going to be Bone Monks and Soldiers. And, well, the key strategy is to attempt to get as many enemies through the Crystal of Madness's Mist as possible. Because they can then take most of each other out. Now, obviously, for... Flying enemies like Bone Monks, it's not going to be as easy. Because they can pretty much fly wherever the hell they want. And this strategy will come into play mainly for every wave after this one. Because soldiers are incredibly weak, you don't really have to depend on them fighting each other that much. But when you get to the stronger enemies and the stronger waves, oh trust me, you're going to be very thankful for that Crystal of Madness, let me tell you. But primarily, we're just going to bounce all around. And once the battlefield is watered down to my liking, we will then actually try to fight these guys. And as you complete every round, the map will spawn in some helpful items. Mainly things like hallowed health, priceless diamonds, and backpacks full of ammo. Let's go ahead and grab this hallowed health over here. Alright, the next wave is going to be Scarecrows. And I think also uh, Cart Dogs. And by the way, yes, I've been making a mistake this whole time. They're called Cart Dogs, not Cage Dogs. But I think for this wave, we're going to stick to primarily the Sword. And what I want to do is wait for all the Cart Dogs to be killed. Because as strong as they are, when they get shotgunned enough times, they will go down. And if the Scarecrows are the lone survivors of this wave, I will just hop all around and use my magical charge stab attack to take them out. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all this map is. So, the scoreboard up here in the top left says there's uh, question marks for kills. The map doesn't want to spoil how many kills there are, so you're like, oh, I'm almost done, I can take a breather now. In reality, there are 270 total kills. That cart dog just killed off all the scarecrows. Wow. And yeah, if um, the lone remaining enemy in a wave is a possessed one, or a, a mad one, I guess, they will stay permanently confused. They'll just roll into a dead body. Alright, but this time we have scientists. And duke mages. Oh, okay. Homing fireballs galore. So what I like to do here is have the scientists run through the mist and fight the duke mages, which is really easy to do because they run super fast. 
Of course, they will also fight each other, so just be wary of that. And to be honest, the majority of this map is not very... I mean, if you get this strategy down pat, it's not that difficult. With the exception of the very final round. And let me tell you, the first time I saw this round pop up, I, I'm i pretty sure I died because I was so surprised at what was going on. Oh, and by the way, if you fall down here, you will not die. I did it at least once one previous time just to test it, and you will actually be teleported uh, homecoming style back into the sky and just fall back down into the arena. Now, I don't know if there's a limited number of times you can do that. That much I have not tested. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm not going to test it now, needless to say. But it looks like the majority of the enemies are gone. And a Duke Mage just died to one of his own fireballs, it sounds like. So we're just going to bunny hop around and use our amazing magical sword of deadly danger. I'm going to deflect that fireball. Oh, and it killed one of the scientists. Check it out. And well, yeah, that's pretty much all this map is. Now be very careful. Scientists are not to be trifled with. I could have just forced them to run through the Crystal of Madness's mist, but oh well. Alright, who we got next? Who we got next? Show me the wave. Show me the wave. Oh, I think it's the Windigo wave. Yep, it's Windigos. Okay. So, with most waves, it's at least two enemy types at once. But there are two waves in particular, this being one of the two. Where there is only one type of enemy. So for this one, it's the Wendigo wave. And a future wave is going to be nothing but rats. Now this can take a while to, uh, yeah, to complete because the Wendigos will be chasing each other down. I'm going to see if I can at least expose them all. And I'm also not sure if they've all run through the mist yet, and I don't want to stand still and take a hit. I'm going to hold out my block just to be safe. Yeah, they're going to spend most of their time just, like, chasing each other around. There we go. I think there's a third one. Is there? I don't think there is. No, there definitely is. Where is he? Oh, you son of a bitch. He did that on purpose. I've never seen them stand still like that before. Oh, goody. Now we have bone balls. And I just lost some morale, so that's nice. Oh, and you know what? I think this is a bone ball only round. So there's actually three waves where there's only one enemy type. So, yeah. Wendigo wave. The bone ball wave. And we're eventually going to have a rat wave. Which, yeah, needless to say, is the easiest one. And because bone balls can be a little on the unpredictable side... Let's, um... Let's actually use the serums of blistering heat here. I think there's two total. But be careful, using this can still get you hurt. Come on. Charge that round there, Gus dude. There we go. I really don't save the serums for anything in particular. But I figure the bone balls are the best case to use against them. Alright, now we have Black Phillips and Welders. Ooh, okay. And I think these are the only two enemies in this wave. I think the next one is going to be the Rat Wave. Now, this one can actually be a bit dangerous, mainly because of the Black Phillips. And honestly, they're a much bigger threat than the Welders. Again, mainly because their projectiles are as fast as they are. And since they actually have a ranged attack, I can't just stand in front of the mist and wait for them to run through it without taking hits. I could block with my sword, but I'd be taking a lot of projectiles. And while I'm pretty sure the sword does parry Welder's fireballs... I would be parrying a lot of fireballs, and I, my morale would go down damn quick. And once I dip below 50, I couldn't block anymore. Ooh, ooh, I don't know how the hell that missed me, but it did. That one didn't, though. Let's 
Yeah, look at this. Pretty crazy. I have one hunting rifle round left, and it just went into one of those welders. Whew. I don't want to be too panicked, but I don't want to get too relaxed either. And this is the rat wave. So yeah, this one we can just take as much time as we need to gather supplies. But they do spawn at all four corners, and rats are also immune to the mm, maddening, I guess? Yeah, the maddening effects of the Crystal of Madness, so they can't turn on each other. Wouldn't that be funny seeing rats eat each other to death in this game? Get out of here, cancer mice. Skedaddle. Scatter. Get out of here. And while you guys are trying to chase me with your slow, stubby legs, I am going to gather all of the magic potions I can get. Now, there's three fast fire totems around, and what I'm going to try to do is save all three of them for the final, final wave. And we're also going to be saving, that's what we're saving our bar of soap for, by the way, which is right here. Don't worry, gunfire does not blow it off the ledge. Thank God. That would suck. Okay, I think there's two waves left. This one, I'm pretty sure, is going to be Leathernecks and Mages. Yep, I think I'm right. Oh, and Horrors, too. I forgot about the Horrors. Now, this round is really interesting, because if you can get the Horrors to run through the mist, they can absolutely just run an absolute train on all the enemies. And hell, so can the Leathernecks. Leathernecks can sponge a bit of damage. And their chainsaws deal some pretty non-negligible amounts of damage. So the penultimate round is after this one. And it is going to be priestesses, fork maidens, and most dangerously of all, cowgirls. And let me tell you, those cowgirls can really, really ruin your day. You're really going to want to bounce all of out for that wave. Yeah, look at that. Looks like the horrors damn near wiped everyone out. And he's going to stay permanently confused. <laughs> Check it out. Alright, but here we go. The second most dangerous wave of all. Mostly for the cowgirls. So yes, cowgirls, fork maidens, and priestesses. And what I like to do here is hope and pray that at least the priestesses and the fork maidens fight each other. The cowgirls are typically not very cooperative with this, unfortunately, because they would absolutely just waste everybody. I'm also not sure what this track is called, but I really like it. I'm gonna have to look that shit up. If I can go ahead and take the cowgirls out and use up some rivets, I'll call that a win. But if it ever comes down to simply fork maidens and priestesses, you're pretty much you pretty much win this round. Oh, one of the cowgirls just got demolished. I think it was her cowgirl ally. And yes, I did just pick up a serum. I don't care. Matter of fact, I want to see if I can have one of these fork maidens walk through the mist. And so she will be permanently confused. Oh, that would take a while, wouldn't it? <sighs> are there any more diamonds? There's one. Of course, the fork maidens are guarding it. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. We are going to gather the last of the morale and the health. As soon as you kill that last fork maiden, matter of fact, I'm going to I'm gonna bring this soap closer to her. As soon as you get rid of this fork maiden, grab the soap, and hope your aim is true. Take out one of the experimental horses, and there you go. So yes, we have a boss wave, ladies and gents. The experiments and the guardian are both back for one last hurrah. And I will tell you, right here, right now, the experiment is by far the bigger threat here. They fire so many of those damn fireballs. And each one of them can deal an absolutely obscene amount of damage. It turns Dusk into a bullet hell game. Yep, 
Utilize that bounce. Don't waste all your ammo. This is the only round that concerns me. And it's only because of that damn horse. If I can spot the bar of soap, I could try to pick it up, but that would be way too dangerous. You do not want to get too close to that horse. I mean, look at all that. You are literally turning dusk into bullet hell. Oh, God. Don't you dare. Don't you even think about it. I mean, I guess if the Guardian is closer to me, I can go ahead and try to blast him away first, but... One of you, please freaking die. Oh, Jesus, this is a bad idea. Changing direction is usually not a good idea. Where's the experiment? No! No! Oh, God. Oh, shit. One wrong move now, and I'm dead. Nope. Woo! Oh, my God. I lost track of the experiment. For a split second, I thought the Guardian finished it off. And then when I saw it, it was right in front of me. Whew. Yeah. Whew. Breathe. <laughs> that is the only wave that scares me. And it's only because of those experiments. So, needless to say, if you don't bring the soap with you and or you try to throw the soap at one of the experiments and you miss and you have two of those fucking things just spitting machine gun fireballs at you uh, yeah yeah the sweat levels will be rising even more oh my god I have been dreading this map since the start of either playthrough my original dusk playthrough and this one okay I think that's all the potions and we'll get more health and morale before the final fight against the uh, final boss anyway so yeah let's just um, let's get the hell up out of here Excellent. Come to us. if you say so oh my god the dweller in darkness oh man my underarms are sweaty after that boss wave it's only the boss wave that scares me I mean, the Bone Ball Wave, kind of, because of how erratic their attacks are, but that Boss Wave, I mean, if you if you let those guys flank you, you better find the nearest jump pad and just bounce like your life depends on it. Oh my god. That was... Ooh, that was anxiety-inducing. And to be fair... <coughs> to be fair... <laughs> to be fair, most of that final wave went perfectly fine until I lost track of the experiment at the very end. Fortunately, it was very close to death, and I think I actually killed it with a crossbow as I was frantically trying to bunny hop away from it. Because if I had jumped straight into it and I had been in its face when it started spitting at me, I would have I died instantly. I think each of those fireballs, each individual fireballs that it spits can deal like 40 or 50 damage, and on this difficulty, forget it. Absolutely forget it. I don't know if the amount of fireballs they spit increases depending on the difficulty level, but... Oh my god, just no. No, sir. I I will I will never ever attempt this on Duskmare. I couldn't even imagine. I would I would lose it. I would get so burnt out in this game and never play it again. <laughs> oh man. But that was it. That was definitely the hardest map of the game. The final the final map is it's nowhere near as difficult as this one. If I die in the final map, it's whatever. It's still not as difficult as this one. But Whew. This is by far going to be the longest video, at least in terms of the actual gameplay is concerned. But that was it, everyone. The Dweller in Darkness, the Horde mode map, the waves of destruction, and culminating in a friggin' boss rush. My goodness. Oh. <laughs> there just had to be two of those damn experiment horses fireballing you to death. But that's it. The Dweller in Darkness has once again been conquered in one try somehow no idea how I was able to pull that off but anyway everyone that was the penultimate map of dusk hope you all enjoyed it hope everyone has an amazing rest of their day or night I am signing off for now 
And when we come back, we are finishing this playthrough. We have one map left to go. It is finally time to take down the leader of this cult and put an end to his cultish otherworldly reign once and for all. So until then, everyone, I'm out of here. Stay safe. Keep on dusking on all that good stuff. And I will see you all for the final map. And until then, I will see you all later. Whew. Bye-bye. <laughs>